rolling. We spent the last two months traveling Europe with this carry-on setup only. We flew into Italy, hopped around a bunch of cities there, then we went to Slovenia to get married, then Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, back to Croatia, flew to Greece, hopped around a bunch of Greek islands, and we're finally back in the States. So this setup has obviously taken us very far, and we put a lot of thought into all of the stuff that we brought. So in this video, we're gonna share with you every single thing we brought and walk through all the details. Let's dive into it. The suitcases that we brought on the trip are the Monos Carry On Plus suitcases. We have a whole video reviewing these bags. We absolutely love them and they've traveled many miles with us so far. Technically, this bag is a little bit bigger than your standard international carry on requirements, but we've used them on plenty of international flights. We haven't gone dinged yet and they always fit in the storage bins overhead. So let's actually dive in. All right, starting on the compression side of my suitcase. The first thing I brought were these jeans. I absolutely love these jeans, but honestly, it was so hot the full two months that we were in Europe. And that's probably gonna be a constant theme throughout this video. One of the only things that we overpacked on were warmer clothes on this trip. We pretty much just wore summer clothes the entire time, but I do love these jeans and I think I put them on once or twice. All right, moving on to this bigger packing cube. I absolutely love this item and this got a whole lot of use. This is just a white button up shirt that I got from Costco actually. It's by Eddie Bauer originally. It is the lightest weight material and doesn't hold on to any wrinkles. And I think the main thing I actually used this for was covering up my shoulders whenever I was entering churches in Italy. It was perfect to just throw in the day pack and have handy in case I needed it. Next up, I just have a lightweight set of pajamas. I have this dress from Athleta, which I wore constantly. I love the sweat wicking material of it. And it was the perfect thing to throw on during the heat. And another constant thing that you'll probably see throughout this video is that we actually love athletic-y material. I'm a huge sucker for nylon or anything sweat wicking. I know it's definitely a matter of personal preference, but we find these materials work really well on the road. They don't really hold on to sweat or smell, so you can definitely rewear them between washes. And they usually don't really wrinkle easy either. So we definitely go for things that are athletic material, but still can be dressed. Up. I have some tank tops here, nothing too interesting. I have this pair of shorts that I actually never used. I still have the tags on them just because I always wanted to look a little bit more dressy than just throwing on a pair of athletic shorts. I have this romper, again from Athleta, that I wore constantly. Again, it's athletic-y material and really high quality. One of the main things that I like this for was actually using it as a beach cover-up. It's kind of nice because you only have to keep track of one item. And I also really like that there were zippered pockets on this. So this is where I ended up keeping our valuables while we were at the beach. I'd keep my wallet, phone, keys in here and zip it up and just throw it off to the side of our bags, hoping that potential thieves would go for the bag that we brought instead of the clothes so really like this and this got a lot of use another pair of athletic shorts that i really used i also brought this long skirt i think it was just from target and what was really nice about this was that it was still really lightweight and breezy on a hot summer's day but i could also use it to cover my knees whenever we were going into churches at one point i even threw this in our day pack and used it to cover up my knees before we entered a church in venice so that worked pretty well I have another athletic dress here. This one is from Outdoor Voices. And the difference between this one and the other one is that it has these built-in shorts with the pockets in them. Honestly, I don't love this feature just because my torso is a little bit too long for that, but I do love the material of this and this got a whole lot of use. Just in general, I'm a big fan of dresses and rompers whenever you're traveling, just because you don't have to put an outfit together. I have one swimsuit and another swimsuit that I actually picked up in Florence. I probably only needed one. And then I have these pants. I think I also got these from Costco, but they're just a really lightweight material that were pretty useful on travel days. So that is one packing cube done. Moving on to the next one. I think this is mainly t-shirts, but it definitely got pretty disorganized throughout the journey. 
Yep, we're starting out with pants here. So this is another athletic-y lightweight pair of pants. These did get a decent amount of use and I like that they were wide leg. I have a cottony t-shirt which wrinkled a whole bunch. And that's another thing about athletic-y materials. They tend to dry really quickly. This took forever to dry, which actually made a difference because a lot of our Airbnbs didn't have dryers. So we would usually hang dry our clothes and you could definitely tell the ones that were more nylon dried right away, whereas something like this would take forever. So I'll probably swap this out going forward. Moving on, another t-shirt that didn't get a whole lot of use just because it was so hot. I have the Amazon version of the Lululemon Align tank that got a decent amount of use. Another t-shirt that didn't get a whole lot of use. I was mainly wearing dresses and tank tops. Here's an athletic-y tank top that I wore quite a bit. Another athletic-y tank top from Target. Another athletic -y tank top from Target. Tank top from Target. Tank top from Target. And t-shirt from Target. Again, a more wrinkly material and it definitely shows, so didn't wear that too often. And then I just have my socks and undergarments in this cube. Moving into the other side of the bag, we have the day pack that we used constantly. This was kind of our everyday carry. Honestly, it's a little big, but we liked that there's a theft proof element to it. So the zippers on the back. And we also liked that it kind of kept its structure so that we felt more comfortable carrying things like our camera in there. I don't know if this is still sold on Amazon, but we can definitely link something similar below. Okay, so moving on. Another thing that didn't get much use was this jacket from Quince. I actually really like this jacket, but again, it was just too hot to wear jackets. So I do like this and hopefully it gets more wear on a different trip. I have a couple more things that I brought but didn't use a whole lot. The first one is this sweatshirt by Alo Yoga. I absolutely love this sweatshirt and I use it all the time at home. Once again, it was just too hot. So this would get some occasional use in the Airbnb when we had the AC cranking, but I still love this sweatshirt. I have some leggings. I wore these sometimes on travel days, but honestly not too much, just because I wanted to look a little bit more put together. This one kind of surprised me. This is a Turkish towel scarf kind of thing. I thought I would use this a whole lot to cover my shoulders in Italian churches, but honestly, again, this material was just too hot. I ended up using that white button up instead a lot of the times, but I do think this is a good option. And honestly, this could be used as a blanket on an airplane or even a towel at the beach. So a good option, but I don't think I would bring this again. The only other pair of shoes that I brought besides my sneakers, which I'll talk about in a little bit, are these sandals from Reef. I absolutely love these. I was on a hunt for sandals that could be dressed up, were waterproof and that you could just slide on. And I think these fit the bill perfectly. I wore these all day walking around in the heat and my feet only started to hurt at the very end of the day. So I would highly recommend these. I considered bringing my Birkenstocks instead, but the one thing about Birkenstocks is they're not really waterproof and you can't really bring them to the beach. So I thought these worked really well and they also packed down really well. So I feel like I've been rambling about these, but I do love them and would highly recommend them. Next up is this sling bag that I got on Amazon. This was actually perfect for running around and keeping my belongings in here. I like that it was kind of theft proof. Whenever I was going through a crowd, I would just put my hand over the zipper like this and I always felt like my belongings were safe. We actually saw this everywhere, so this is no secret, but I think it's a great bag for travel. And in here I have some hair tools. So this is just my mini hair dryer from Babyliss. I pretty much just looked up the highest quality hair dryer that I could get that was the smallest size and that was dual volt and this fit the bill on all accounts and it worked really well. One thing I will say, if you do get this, definitely switch it to 250 mode if you're going to Europe to use it. I forgot to do that the very first time I turned it on over there and these coils got super hot. It was honestly kind of scary. So definitely remember that for hair tools. If there is a switch, definitely switch it whenever you get over there. And the next hair tool that I brought over is this Wavy Talk Hot Brush. You can kind of use this to curl and straighten your hair. Honestly, I have very straight hair, so I don't do too much to it. But this was nice just to give it a little bit of pep. And another cool thing about this is it detaches and comes with a bunch of different heads. I only brought this one because that's all I needed. But I think there's a curling wand and a couple of other ones 
ones included in the set. And this is dual voltage as well, so I used it a couple of times over in Europe. And Michael actually 3D printed a case for this head, and I accidentally broke it just this morning whenever we were packing up to get ready for this video. So thank you, Michael, for this case. It ensured that the bristles didn't get damaged, but we're definitely gonna have to print a new one before we leave. And really quickly, we wanna take a second to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is us. If you didn't know, we own our own Amazon store where we sell the packing cubes that you see me holding and behind me here. I actually designed each of these cubes from scratch so that we could help people make their travels a little easier. As you can see, we have two sizes here. We have the small and the large. The small sizes fit in your average carry-on and fit more lightweight summer clothes or kids clothing. Whereas the large sizes, you can fit pretty much anything you want and are great, especially if you're packing just for a weekend trip. Thank you all so much for considering supporting our channel. It really means the world to us and keeps us on the road. Now let's head back to the video. And another item that I would highly recommend for travel in general, though it didn't get a whole lot of use on this trip, again, because it was so hot, was this Patagonia down sweater, I think it's called. We'll definitely link this below, but this is my favorite puffer and it gets very small and it can be used as a pillow. So that's pretty much everything in my suitcase and I'll hand it over to Michael to talk about his things. So we're gonna walk through my suitcase now and this is, oh, hey, Zeppelin. Hey, you wanna be part of the movie? You wanna be part of the movie? Okay, see ya. Pardon that very rude interruption. I'll dive right into my suitcase here. So I have the same mono suitcase as Courtney, except mine is in black or hers is in tan. And honestly, you can't tell from looking at it, but to actually close these suitcases, we've pretty much had to sit on them and muscle them closed with the zippers. So these things can really fit a lot. I'm gonna unleash the beast here. And I'll walk you through what I have in my suitcase. So I'll open up the compression side here. So this is where I have the bulk of my clothing. So starting off with this main cube here, we have two microfiber towels. One's a full beach size and the other one's a lot smaller. We're gonna mainly use this smaller one to dry our hair, but we actually use both of them at the beach and the beach towel was definitely more comfy, but both work very well. I brought this REI pullover. It was a long sleeve that was supposed to keep me warm. Didn't get too much action, but I like that you can dress it up or down. I'm actually embarrassed to say I brought two pairs of these 32 degrees athletic shorts. Neither one of these got anywhere in two months. So blue and gray. Great shorts, but honestly, I just wanted to look a little bit more dressed up when we were running around these European cities, so didn't get too much wear out of those. I also have my swimsuit. This is the only swimsuit I brought. We got it at Costco. I actually cut the tag out, so I have no idea who makes this. I liked it because they kind of look like shorts, so they could kind of be dressed up. You didn't feel too much like a beach bum while you're wearing your swimsuit, and it has a zipper pocket, which is nice whenever you're going in the ocean. Next, I brought a couple pairs of shorts. These ones are made by Callaway. We found the golf shorts wrinkle the least, and I feel like they look pretty dressed up. Pretty much stuck with golf shorts, even though I am no way a golfer. These khaki shorts are Banana Republic. These ones are incredibly lightweight and I just feel like they look a little bit more dressy. Also got these at Costco. And my third Costco pants are these light blue Callaway golf shorts as well. Those got a lot of action. The last thing I have in this cube are my sleep pants. These are 32 degrees heat, very thin, lightweight, synthetic material, but really nice and comfy sleep pants. So that is cube number one. Moving on to cube number two. Here I have a pair of black gym shorts. Here I have a blue waffle knit crew neck. I also brought three pairs of pants on this trip. All of them were athletic material, which allowed them to not wrinkle and keep pretty fresh on the road. These ones are the Lululemon ABC pants. They're probably my favorite ones of the bunch. So comfy, look very sharp, and they actually make tall sizes at Lululemon. So this was very nice being 6'6 myself. And then the other pants I wore were these green ones, which are Old Navy Active. I don't think they make these anymore, but they were a nice kind of knockoff from the Lululemons at a fraction of the price. And then these ones that I'm wearing right now, which are also Old Navy, and I'm not gonna take these off to put in that pile. So that finishes this cube off. This cube right here is where I keep my intimates. It's really just socks and underwear. I pretty much exclusively wear 32 degrees underwear. They're super comfy, they breathe well. We'll link them down below. The next thing we have in here are our laundry bags. Honestly, we didn't use these too much. They're kind of a weird shape. The zipper design on top just isn't too functional. So we ended up just using packing cubes to keep our dirty clothes separate from our clean clothes. And that worked pretty well for us. So probably wouldn't bring these again. Next in here, I have my flip-flops. I've had these since high school, so they clearly have survived the test of time. I think Sperry's makes these really comfy and they were great at the beach. Alrighty, opening up the second half of my suitcase here. Inside this packing cube is where I kept all my shirts for the trip. If you saw our last packing video, you'll notice that I wear a lot of the 32 degrees cool shirts. You can get these on Amazon or at Costco, and truth be told, that's the bulk of what's in here. They're an incredible synthetic material. They stretch well, they dry super quick, and they're really comfy, and they're incredibly cheap. So these are probably one of my favorite things I own. Outside of those black t-shirts, I also have a couple other shirts I brought with me. This is a blue polo, also 32 degrees cool. It's nice just to be able to dress up a bit more when you're on the road. It still has a pretty nice material feel to it. I also have another identical polo of theirs that is in gray. 
So both these fit well and are pretty darn comfy. More 32 cool t-shirts. You can never have too many t-shirts. Oh, there's even another. And the last shirt I have in here is this button down. Mizzen and Maid makes this. This is their Spinnaker shirt and it is unbelievably stretchy. I swear you can make a slingshot out of this. This is so nice on the road because one, it never wrinkles and two, it's just so comfy. I like traveling with one nicer shirt in case I do need to dress up. So we did wear this a couple times when we went out for dinner or met with my family. I think these are probably the nicest dress shirts I've owned. Great shirt. Next, I have this packing cube, which is just for socks. I pretty much wear the exact same socks, so I never have to deal with sorting socks. Got these on Amazon, they're really nice. I feel like they're a good price for the good material you get, and they are incredibly simple, and they held up actually surprisingly well, given how many miles we were walking with them. So, whole packing cube, full of socks. Brought the stretchy belt, which kept my pants up, wore this most days. In this last packing cube, we kept our jackets. Opening this up here, we were able to fit Courtney's rain jacket which is a donation from her grandmother's wardrobe. So definitely gotten their use out of this coat. We had my rain jacket, which I believe is an REI rain jacket. I like that it's really lightweight. It does a pretty good job of blocking the rain. I like that it keeps you cool and it's not a sauna while you're wearing it. REI raincoat, definitely recommend it. And last but not least, we have my puffer jacket, which is made by Target's Goodfellow brand. I think it's really comfy. It definitely does not compress down nearly as well as Courtney's Patagonia one. So this took up way more space than we wanted. Courtney gave me a lot of grief for carrying this around because she ended up carrying it most of the trip. So it took up a lot of space and Courtney, I'm sorry. I know it didn't get any use on the trip, but I still really like this coat. So it was nice to know it was there. I also brought this black baseball cap. It's a nice mesh material. On the hot days in Chiquitera, this was nice to have. And the last thing I have in my suitcase here is a sleeve full of artificial tear eye drops. I get crazy red eyes when I travel and these things have been a godsend for keeping my eyes comfortable. I brought way too many of these. I think I bought a hundred pack before we left thinking that I would need them every single day. I think I only needed them on a couple really early mornings or long travel days. So definitely overpacked these. But it was comforting knowing they were here. And that's everything I kept in this suitcase. So the personal item that we both use for this trip is the Peak Design backpack, specifically the 30 liter size. And before we hear about it in the comments, we know that this is a little bit bigger than what most airlines will allow for a personal item. But again, we haven't had any problems with it yet. Every single airline we flew on allowed this as a personal item and it did fit in the seat in front of us. And we do have a full video walking through our review of this bag. But spoiler alert, we absolutely love it and it worked very well on this trip. So as you might notice, I did bring a water bottle on this trip. This is the Awalo water bottle and we absolutely love these water bottles bunch of lipstick on it. <laughs> Mainly because they're extremely leak proof and they're aluminum. I know a plastic water bottle would have been much lighter, but we just like drinking out of aluminum water bottles and we like that it kept our water cold. The other nice thing about this water bottle is you can actually hook it on things. So whenever our backpacks were stuffed so much that the water bottle couldn't fit in the side pocket, we could easily just clip it onto the carabiner like that. And these carabiners were actually really useful to have on the front of our backpacks. We ended up clipping, I don't know, a sandwich bag that we would get at a store to the front of our backpacks as well. Or maybe our food bag, our water bottles. It worked pretty well for us. Another thing that we have with these backpacks is a rain cover that was stowed away in this front pocket here. We ended up using this, I think just twice, but we were really thankful we had it whenever we needed it. This essentially just covered our entire backpack whenever we had those rainy travel days. And for an extra layer of security, we actually wore our rain jackets and flew the back of the rain jacket across our backpacks as well, because we were both bringing laptops and electronics, which we definitely didn't want to get wet. And that pretty much saved the day because it actually downpoured on us on a travel day in Trieste. So we were very very thankful to have these because we didn't bring an umbrella. Diving into the top of the backpack here, I think I have a couple travel items mainly. We have a couple of these eye masks. We wear these every single night, whether or not we're traveling, but they're especially handy on planes. We like just the cheap ones that you get off Amazon, so I'll link those down below. We also have these Sea to Summit inflatable pillows. We actually use these quite a bit and they fold down to pretty much nothing, so love those. Moving on, we have a pen here. I would definitely recommend keeping a pen accessible, particularly for airport travel days, because you never know what form somebody wants you to fill out. And I was the hero in one of our lines because I was the only one that had a pen. <laughs> 
And I'm sure you saw this coming, but we have air tags in every single one of our bags. We didn't have to check any of our bags on our flights, but if we did, we would have known the exact location thanks to the air tags. And it was just nice having that peace of mind knowing that these were tucked away in each of our bags. Now this one in particular, I didn't actually keep in my bag. I actually used this for Airbnb keys. So almost every Airbnb that we stayed at had a set of keys that we needed to bring along with us whenever we went out. And it's definitely scary holding onto somebody else's keys while you're running around because you don't want to lose them and have to pay a hefty fine and be locked out of your Airbnb. So I used this keychain with an air tag on it to just clip the Airbnb keys whenever we got a new set. And it was just that extra layer of security that made me feel a little bit better. Probably shouldn't have thrown that. And moving on, this is kind of a weird one, but I always kept some sort of napkin or wipe at the front of my bag because a lot of the buses that we were on didn't have toilet paper. So unfortunately that was pretty handy whenever we needed it. We did bring these travel locks, which we ended up not really using because there was no situation where we needed to lock our luggage, thankfully. And I also just have wired headphones for movie watching on airplanes and some scrunchies. Now jumping into the bulk of the bag. I was working my nine to five remotely for a decent amount of the trip. So I did bring my large work laptop with me and that fit pretty well inside the Peak Design backpack. Also in this back pocket, I just have a folder with copies of our passport information. Didn't end up having to use it, thankfully. And then I also have my Kindle Paperwhite. I absolutely love my Kindle Paperwhite. Michael has one too. And it's really nice to be able to download pretty much any book for free from our home library when we're anywhere in the world. And we use the Libby app to do that, by the way. But this was really nice to have and definitely got some use, particularly on our beach days. Moving on, I have my felt bag from Lululemon. I ended up using this quite a bit. I particularly liked it for travel days because I could just wear it around my waist and keep my phone, my wallet, and all of my important documents in here. And if I was boarding a plane, I could just swing it around to hide it or just stuff it in the top of my backpack. So, and I also wore it out during the day as well, quite a bit. In this little pouch here, we have a lot of our medicine. I really like this pill case. I got this years ago on Amazon, but I think a lot of sellers are making this now. It's nice because you can easily label a lot of your medicine and it's magnetic and nice and compact as well. Other than that, we have some band-aids in here, some Tylenol, Pepto-Bismol, and we even have these cleaning tablets for our retainers. So this was kind of the, the first aid kit of our trip. I will say we did get sick during our Italy leg of the trip. We wish we would have had Dayquil or Nyquil or something, but we were definitely able to pick up medicine in some Italian pharmacies. It was just a bit of a language barrier. So moving on to some of our toiletries here, Michael and I just share toiletries. So I ended up carrying most of the toiletries and he ended up carrying most of the electronics and camera gear. So I'll quickly go over what we have here. We have two toiletry bags, one we use in the shower and one we use outside of the shower and we just kind of hang it by the sink. We have a lot of stuff in here. I'd probably cut back on some of these items next time, but we wanted to be a little bit over prepared just because we had our wedding in the middle of this trip, but you might've realized already we didn't actually pack our wedding clothes with us. Thankfully, we had our parents bring those over in a carry-on. So we didn't actually have to stuff a wedding dress into our carry-on, but we did want to overpack a little bit in terms of toiletries, medicine, and so forth, just so we didn't have a disaster on our wedding day. So diving into it here, we have some anti-itch gel that we ended up getting in Bologna, Italy, because I was getting bit up like crazy all through Italy. For some reason, Michael doesn't get bit by mosquitoes at all. They all go to me and I swell up like crazy whenever I get bit. So that gel did provide some relief for me. Another thing that was good for mosquito bites were these itch relief patches. I think the jury's still out on whether or not these heal the bites a little bit faster, but I think they're supposed to absorb the venom a little bit. And I do think they worked a little bit. They definitely took the edge off and at least prevented me from scratching. Another thing to do with bug bites and then I'll move on is just some bug spray. I just filled up this bottle from home and I actually had my mom bring a little bit more bug spray in the middle of the trip because I had used it all. Moving on from bug bites, another thing that we picked up during our trip are these hydrogen peroxide drops for your ear. We picked these up in Greece because Michael was starting to get what we thought was swimmer's ear. And these were definitely a nice to have because they dry out the water in your ears. And we definitely didn't wanna be dealing with any swimmer's ear or ear infections on plane rides because the pressure can really hurt your ears. We think these work pretty well and I think we'll actually pack them next time. And something else that we packed a little bit more of than 
usual was just skincare items in general. Again, because we were getting married on this trip, we just wanted a few nice to have so that we could feel our best on our wedding day. So this is some eye cream that I brought that I really like. We have <laughs> our tried and true tretinoin, some little samples, and we even brought teeth whitening strips so that we had a bright white smile during our wedding. We also have these pimple patches. These are kind of similar to the bug bite patches and they actually work for small cuts as well. So we use these quite a bit. We have some little dental flossers and then we have some makeup remover. This is the cleansing balm for e.l.f. I think it works pretty well. We have Michael's pomade that he uses for his hair. He calls it his pomegranate because he always forgets the word for pomade. Some facial razors, again, for that added skincare for the wedding. And then in the main bulk of the bag, we have Old Spice deodorant. Might sound gross, but we just share deodorant. We really like the smell of this and it lasted the whole trip for both of us. We have stick sunscreen. This one's just from Target. This was nice because it lasted a really long time because it's a solid and you don't have to worry about liquid requirements. Plus it's kind of hard to find cheap sunscreen in Europe. So that was definitely really nice to have. We did bring liquid sunscreen as well. I think we went through two of these and we've been using this one for years and absolutely love it. I brought two travel brushes. This one sort of went in my day pack because it can fold up and this one was in my main toiletry bag. Honestly, I might just bring this one next time because the bristles definitely got damaged on this one from shoving it in the bag. And just making my way through the bag here. We also brought moisturizing cream. I'm obsessed with this one from Cetaphil. If you have dry skin, you have to check this out. And then also Aquaphor. I brought a little leave-in conditioner for my hair some dry shampoo for my hair. And then this is something I probably wouldn't bring again, at least for full-time travel. This is essentially just a larger version of the pill case that I showed earlier, but I brought this mainly for supplements like large vitamins and my big magnesium pills. But next time I probably would take those either in plastic bags or their original bottles so I could just throw them out as I use them. Cause this is pretty big to carry around. Another really useful item that we ended up using all the time were these TSA approved scissors. The blade on these is technically short enough to pass through TSA. I have a feeling these are gonna be taken away from us someday, but we're glad they made it through with us for this trip because we use them all the time. I actually use these to cut Michael's hair for our wedding day because ever since the pandemic, I have been Michael's exclusive hairstylist. And these are also just nice to open packaging from the grocery store, cut off tags and whatever you use scissors for. So we're really glad we had these. And then we also just have some nail and cuticle clippers here. I think that is most of the stuff in this main bag. In this smaller bag here, we have our toothbrushes. We actually carry electric toothbrushes. I know they're not the most travel friendly, but our dentist convinced us that we need to be brushing with electric toothbrushes. So we never leave home without them. In previous trips, we've actually shared the same toothbrush body and then just carried our own heads. That's kind of inconvenient to do for the long term. So for this trip, we brought both toothbrushes and we have these handy little toothbrush covers on top of them. And then we both wear a set of retainers as well. So we couldn't leave home without those. So that's it for this hanging toiletry sink bag. I think we're gonna swap this out for a different bag on our travels down the road. And we'll definitely be filming those packing videos as well because we're definitely perfecting our packing setup. So stay tuned for those. So jumping into our shower toiletry bag, this was essentially all of our supplies for taking a shower. We would just hang this up in our shower once we got to an Airbnb. And we kind of like keeping those toiletries separate. So on the bottom here, we pretty much just had shampoo and conditioner. Some of these bottles we got off of Amazon and some of them we got from Target. I actually think I like the Target ones more because the Amazon bottles stay squeezed and don't let any air back in. So I think I'm gonna pick up some more of the Target ones. We also brought a loofah with us and then opening up this top portion, we have Michael's razor that he uses for his facial hair. And it has this little attachment, which was actually super useful for cutting his hair. We were able to get the back of his neck with this attachment. We have my razor here with a little safety cover on here. I don't think the safety cover was uh, super necessary. It's kind of bulky. I brought a couple of these makeup remover towels. The nice thing about these is you shouldn't actually need makeup remover to remove your makeup. You can just pretty much wet your 
face, wet this with water, and scrub off all of your makeup. So these definitely worked pretty well for that. And then we also packed these Matador soap bags. These are basically dry bags for your soap that allows the soap to dry through, but the outside of the bag shouldn't get that wet. It's kind of just a complicated process, so I don't know if I would bring these again. But one thing I did want to highlight is that I used a shave bar from Kitsch instead of bringing along like shaving cream or something. And that was definitely a nice to have, especially because I didn't need to access it every day. So we'll definitely link that below. And I think we might even have a discount code for Kitsch. So maybe check that out if you're interested. And I think that's it for the shower supplies. Now moving on to my makeup bag. If you don't wear makeup or it's of no interest to you, feel free to skip ahead. This makeup bag is from Target. It's from their open story line. I'm not super set on it, so I might be switching in the future just because I feel like it was kind of hard to get everything in there and organize it. If you guys have any makeup bags that you love, please let me know because I'm on the hunt for one. But the first thing I have in here is just a little mirror that actually lights up. And as you can see, I broke it on this trip, but this was nice whenever our Airbnbs just didn't have a mirror. I definitely brought more makeup than I needed, but again, we did have our wedding in the middle of this trip and I did my own makeup for the day. So I wanted to have some options here. I did bring my own foundation and just put it in little containers, but I ended up throwing those away because they got so messy in this bag. So I don't have that here, but I have my favorite concealer. I have some beauty blenders. You'll see quickly that a lot fit into this little bag, which is nice. I have this little eyeshadow palette from e.l.f. This is like the bite size palette or something like that. I think these are perfect for travel and they're only $3. I have this little SPF powder. I didn't bring much jewelry at all, but I just have a couple of different earring options here and I brought it in this little pouch. Uh, this is a weird one, but this Lumify is really nice for keeping the whites of your eyes bright and we use this on our wedding day. I have a lip liner here, lip pencil sharpener, and a couple little things I wanted to highlight. Highlight, literally, <laughs> this is mini highlighter from Becca Cosmetics. This is in the champagne pop color. And just in general, whenever I travel, I really like trying to find the minis of different products. So you'll see here I have mini highlighter. I have this mini blush from Milani, which I'll link below. I think I got most of these from Target and a mini bronzer from Physicians Formula. This is the butter bronzer. I have some brow powder, nothing special, some loose setting powder, a more full coverage concealer, a Shiseido eyelash curler. And another random thing I wanna highlight in here that I think is really useful for travel is getting tubing mascara versus traditional mascara. Tubing mascara is really nice because it essentially comes out in clumps and doesn't leave a huge mess on your face. You essentially just need water to remove it. And I think it's kind of a game changer just because it's so easy. So this is the Maybelline Sky High Lash Sensational, but I think any tubing mascara will work. I have these cream sticks from Nude Sticks. The one thing I want to highlight about these is they actually come in these really handy tins, which I use to actually pack these mini brushes from Real Techniques. I think I got these in a pack on Amazon, but obviously I really like these just because of the size of them. And it's nice to still be able to bring a full set of brushes in a really compact size. And the other tin, I just have this uh, lash separator, a little spoolie, these little mascara samples that I got before I left, brow gel, and some tweezers. Yep, nothing too special here. So yeah, I fit a decent amount of makeup into this little bag. Next time I'll probably bring a little bit less, but Again, I was getting married and doing my own makeup. So a lot of this was nice to have. So yeah, that's everything I had in my makeup bag and my main Peak Design backpack. Now let's jump into Michael's bag. So let's dive into my backpack. I have the same Peak Design backpack as Courtney, though mine's probably a little bit lighter. Courtney was an absolute rock star carrying all our toiletries. So big shout out to her for that. So diving right in here. Normally this backpack, I'd have a lot of our camera gear in here. So much actually goes into making a video and we have tons of equipment to support that. We didn't want to bore you with all that gear details if you're not interested in making videos. But if you are interested, let us know and we're happy to make a gear video. But the gear aside, let's dive into what we have here. Inside this cube, we actually have a lot of our electronic supplies. It has a pretty decent weight to it. We really like these clear cases for electronics because you can actually see exactly what's inside. We used to be fumbling around our backpacks trying to find this cord or that cord. And this really helps us keep our electronics super organized on the road. Inside this cube, we have our Mac 
MacBook charger, which is always important to have access to. We have a very cheap Jabra headset for taking work calls, a surplus of power bricks. And probably the most important thing in this cube is this power transformer. When you're traveling internationally, not only do you have to worry about different shaped plugs, but you also have to worry about the different voltages of the different countries you visit. This thing auto converts to 120 volts. So if you did have certain tools that need to run at 120 and didn't have that transformer, this works really well. What we really like about this power adapter in particular is it's pretty much an extension cord. Some of our other power adapters just sit right in the wall where this one actually has a long extension cord. So for some Airbnbs with fewer outlets or outlets in weird places, this was really handy to get our power exactly where we needed it. Along that similar vein, we also travel with this giant battery. So this is a large portable battery made by Anchor. It actually has enough juice to charge a laptop. So we really enjoyed this because if we ever needed to use our laptop on a bus or somewhere where we were without power for a longer period of time, we knew we'd be able to charge our laptop with this battery here. This little power adapter was actually really interesting. It's only two prong, but you could plug in a basic iPhone box, but it was just super easy to connect to different power supplies. So I actually really like this. I believe this is actually designed by a Japanese company and there's supposed to be tons and tons of different ways you can use it. There's a bunch of different adapters adapters that came with. We brought them all just because we weren't quite sure how to use it when we first left. But I think this is really the only piece we needed for our leg of the trip. But there's a lot of ways you can use this while you're traveling. And then we just have some standard USB-C cables for charging. Inside this other queue, we have some other electronics we'll walk you through. Again, love these clear cases. We have the laptop charger for Courtney's laptop. We have another style of plug converter. So we've used this one for years is a different outlet heads you can use and you can plug just about anything into it. We did notice in some places with older outlets, because this thing's so heavy, it would fall out of the walls. So I still think I prefer the extension cord variety, but this was nice to have as an extra when we needed to charge more things in a given night. We have another portable battery by Anchor. This one's mainly used for charging phones and we actually use this one all the time. It's an absolute workhorse. So definitely nice for having power on the go. What we also have here is a bunch of different outlet prong types for the extension cord power converter. So we brought all these, when truth be told, we probably only needed the standard European outlet size, but it's good knowing that wherever you go in the world, you have different outlet adapters, so you can take it pretty much anywhere you go. These next things were an absolute surprise for us based on how much we used them. These are portable fans. Courtney picked these up on Amazon and they absolutely crank. They put out a good amount of air and on some of those incredibly hot Italian travel days, these were so nice to have while you were traveling. One of the nice things about these ones in particular is they actually double as a power bank too. So if your phone ever was low on juice, you could use the fan itself to charge it. And these things hold quite a bit of charge. I feel like we only charged them a couple times and we used them all the time. There were even some nights where Airbnbs got very, very hot and these were able to run all night long without needing to be recharged. So if you're looking for a great way to stay cool on the road, these portable fans incredible. The next kind of fun gadget we have here is a carbon monoxide monitor. Some of the cheaper Airbnbs we went to didn't have fire alarms or carbon monoxide detectors. And I know this probably seems overkill, but we really like just when we arrived at a new Airbnb, being able to turn it on and confirm there's no poisonous gas in our Airbnb. This is a fun way to confirm we were safe. We have my razor charger here, and there's a couple other extraneous USB-C and lightning cables for charging our electronics. I brought one pair of Ray-Ban sunglasses and my sunglass case. Those got a lot of use on the sunny Italian and Greek days. We also brought this collapsible water bottle, which we weren't really sure if we'd use that often, but we used it pretty much every single day. So one of the first things we do when we get to an Airbnb, we would unroll this and then just fill it with tap water and put it right in the fridge. And this allowed us to have cold water whenever we wanted it. We actually started this trip out with two silicon ice trays, thinking that's how we we're gonna get cold water on the go. But we soon found out that making ice was pretty time consuming and not the easiest thing to do when you're dealing with small European freezers. So this was a quick and easy way to make sure we had a full thing of cold water every morning when we started our day. Absolutely love this thing. Keeping with that morning routine, probably one of the things that we were surprised by how much we used was this AeroPress Go. So inside here is actually a complete coffee maker and it's pretty marvelous contraption. It nests really Really well inside each other and makes surprisingly good coffee. In all our travels, I think we only bought two coffees and that was either to use up the last of our Bosnian currency or avoid paying for a public toilet when we were in Venice. So this saved us a bunch of money on buying coffees while we were traveling. We did burn through the filters a lot faster than we expected to. So we had our parents resupply us when they saw us for the wedding. And I think now we have a couple hundred left over, but we were so impressed with how well this thing worked. And it made great coffee too. This next thing's probably an unnecessary travel luxury, but it's something I just hate traveling without. And that's our Theragun Mini. So this is a massage gun that's really portable and is so good with neck and back pain. And on some of these long bus rides or plane rides where you're just crammed like sardines in there, I get really stiff. And this thing is just such a problem solver. It is amazing how well it is able to fix some of that pain. The one downside to this is we've had it turn on inside our bags a couple times when you're shoving it under seats and it sounds like there's a jackhammer under your seat. So we designed and 3D printed a lock for this. It didn't work perfectly well on the road. So I think I'm gonna design a hard case for it next. I've used cheap ones of these before and this thing is leaps and bounds better than the cheap knockoffs you can get. So Theragun Mini, absolutely love this thing for travel. 
Wow. This next cube contained pretty much our essential charging setup. The company Away actually makes this packing cube and it's pretty nice quality. Basically it houses what we call the triple troubles. The triple trouble take the next stage of their journey together. And these are wireless charging pads that are designed to have your phone, your AirPods, and your watch all charging on one single wireless charging pad. And it is so nice when you want to minimize wires when you're traveling. Whenever we arrive in an Airbnb, we can just sit this on the nightstand and know we could charge all our essential devices for the next day, which was so nice when you didn't want to futz through getting all the different chargers out. So inside this case here, we had two of these charging pads and then the cables and charging bricks necessary to set those up. So this is a really nice setup for us. Next, we have our portable washing machine on the road. So this is just your standard dry bag. I think this is made by Osprey. And you might remember this if you've seen our South America packing video, but we've used this to clean our clothes before and pretty much you just add water to it. You throw a bit of soap in there and then you slosh it around. So luckily many of the spots we stayed in Europe had washers, but they didn't necessarily have dryers. So we didn't need to use this for washing as much, but help us keep some of our wet clothes from touching our dry clothes while we were traveling. Inside we have a little packet here made by Sea to Summit. This is a pocket laundry wash and actually has little sheets of laundry detergent. So we didn't have to buy any liquid detergent while we were traveling. We could just take a couple sheets of these, throw it in the laundry machines and we were good to go. So this is actually really useful for us. Also in here, I have not one, but two of these Sea to Summit clotheslines and these things work so well. So in our Airbnbs, after we ran our wash, we could set up these clotheslines which have little beads to hold your clothes and we could actually dry our clothes super easy in our Airbnb. And by having two of them, we always made sure we have enough real estate to do all our drying and washing at once. So we really enjoyed the setup. And the last thing we have in here is not laundry related. This is actually a collapsible backpack. We originally brought this to be kind of a day pack or grocery carrying device where we could have a whole backpack set up that could compress down really small. We use this for a couple grocery stores, but ultimately we picked up this tiny little travel tote bag while we were in Bologna. And clearly it's a lot smaller than this collapsible travel backpack. And we're able to use this for our groceries. We still haven't found the perfect collapsible tote bag. So we're toying with making one ourselves. So we might be iterating on this in a future video. And I also have in here a giant regular tote bag. We picked this one up in Florence, thus the David chewing bubble gum, but we just needed an easier way to carry our groceries on the road. One of the ways we keep costs down while we're traveling is to shop and cook for ourselves. So we use this to carry our groceries between the grocery store and our Airbnb. Besides having a bunch of random leftover food from around the world in here, we also have our collapsible Tupperware container. So this thing actually pops out here and you have a full size leftover container. We expected to use this a bit in airport lounges or places we need to scavenge cheap food, but really we mainly used it for if we cut vegetables or had leftover dishes. We just put it in here, pop it in the fridge, and you had meals for the next day. Inside here, we have extra coffee filters, basic necessities like tea packets. We also have boolean cubes in here, which allow us to season our soups or rice dishes. It's just an easy travel-friendly spice you can take with you and find in most grocery stores around the world. We also travel with just Ziploc bags because you never know when you're gonna need a Ziploc bag for food or for other purposes. So that's super lightweight and always nice to have with you. And some little things in here, we have rubber bands in here, which are super useful for tying up bags when you buy them. So instead of having to carry around chip clips or other ways to store your bags, we found a little rubber band around the top does wonders for keeping food fresh. And the rest of this stuff I think is just food. Most of this here is just rice and pasta and coffee. But we did bring these liquid IV packets, which really help to stay hydrated. It's nice being able to just dump one pack into a water bottle or a glass and having some good hydrating electrolytes. So these were tasty and served a good purpose. Normally I keep our MacBook Pro in here. I have it set up in our editing station right now, so it's not in here, but I do keep in here my Kindle Paper White. We had some absolutely amazing reading spots on this trip. So I was so thankful for having this. The other thing I brought with us was my bullet journal. It was mostly just used for drawing and doodling, but I also use it to press our wedding flowers. So it's kind of nice being able to take that little souvenir your home with us. In the top of my bag, I usually had this in my pocket, but this is my wallet. What I love about this wallet is it actually has a spot for an AirTag, which is so nice knowing where your money is when you're traveling. And I like that it's a really low profile, so it's not a big bulky bifold wallet. Pick this up on Amazon and it's held incredibly well. I think it's pretty sharp looking. One of the most important things we brought with us was this. This is our travel wallet and passport holder. My favorite feature of this, instead of it being worn around your neck or your waist, like other travel wallets, this actually loops around your belt. So you can wear it inside your pants, almost like an extra pocket. And it's perfectly sized to hold passports. So we were able to keep both of our passports in here and we're constantly able to include them in our pat down knowing they were safe and sound wherever we traveled, which is really important because every hotel or Airbnb you go to in Europe, you need to show these upon arrival. So definitely having them easily accessible and secure was very important for us. We also kept an AirTag in here and I also kept an extra credit card in here in case something would ever happen and we lost our wallet and needed to have an extra form of payment. And here we kept some earplugs. And then I also keep this Refresh PM. It's pretty much an eye gel. Like I said, my eyes get very dry. And if the eye drops weren't gonna do it, this you put in your eyes before sleeping 
sleep and you wake up and your eyes just feel so nice. This is my teeny tiny little travel essential and I kept this with me the entire trip. And so that's pretty much everything I brought in this bag. Like I said, normally there's a whole lot more filming gear in here. So if you're interested in all the things we use to make these videos, definitely let us know and we'd be happy to make a video covering that. And just a couple more things to talk about. We both brought a pair of gym shoes for running around. These got the most wear, obviously. We wore both these shoes pretty much every day. Mine are just ultra range Vans in all white. And I also have a pair of Dr. Fool's cushions in them. And not too much to say about them, but they were pretty comfy. And I just have a pair of black Nike running shoes. As Courtney mentioned, these were our daily drivers and we put so many miles through them. And based on how little they wore, I think I could get many more miles out of these. So definitely a good pair of running shoes. We also both traveled with a pair of AirPods. I honestly didn't get the AirPods hype at first, but now that I own a pair, I totally get it. The noise cancellation is amazing for any mode of transportation. And these were also really good for audio tours around the cities. We downloaded the Rick Steves app and did a lot of walking audio tours throughout the city cities we were exploring. So these were great for that. And even some museums had audio tours to go with them as well. So yeah, these got a lot of use. And as you can see, the sun is clearly setting. We've been filming this video all day. I think the sun's giving us our cue that it's probably time to wrap up. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to our channel to see our adventures from Europe and all around the world. We make countless videos documenting the cities we go to, helpful travel guides, food tours, and other helpful videos. Be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel because we have so many videos coming out documenting all of our European adventures. Thank you all for watching and we'll See you in the next one. Bye. Bye. Let's hope this was recording okay. Yeah, we're good.